Welcome to the Breakthrough and Bloom podcast. My name is Kelsey Marks, and I am your host and your Breakthrough BFF. My mission in the world is to help women who are interested in spirituality really, truly understand who they are at the core of their being, guiding them through the process of healing themselves and really honing into what it means to be human. I intend to be an open channel to allow insights to flow in that help you break through to the next level of who you were always meant to be. With these conversations, we're going to shift some perspectives, okay? And we're going to give you a new way to live the life that you live, allowing the opportunity to truly manifest what it is that you desire. So if you're looking to break through to the next level of who you are, to live the life of your dreams, and to gain a deeper understanding of spiritual topics, well, you have come to the right place. And I know we're going to have so much fun together, and I am beyond excited to have these conversations with you. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. How are you doing? How has your week been? Welcome back to another amazing, lovely episode here at Breakthrough and Bloom. And I don't know if you heard Ranger snoring in the background of the last episode. It was so cute. I heard it when I was listening back to the episode last week. Maybe he'll do it again today because he is behind me again on the bed. So we'll see if (laughs) Ranger snoring will make it again. And today, obviously, thank you for coming back. And today I want to dive into the topic of surrendering, maybe the art of surrendering, because I know there is some misconceptions out there about what surrendering is. And I know plenty of people refuse to do it because they think it means like giving up or failing or being a quitter which it's not. Maybe by definition (laughs) in the dictionary, if you look up surrender, it'll seem like that, um, like to give up in a battle, but we're not fighting here, okay? There's nothing to lose here. So when we think of it this way, that, you know, it's not surrendering in a battle, it's not surrendering in a fight, but it's surrendering as in something in our life that we're doing instead, it's got to have a different meaning, right? It's got to be something different than what we've all thought of surrendering before. There's no white flags, you know, waving in the air here because we're not fighting anything. It's just our life we're living. And this is just something we can do to make it easier. Okay. So before we dive in, I want to take a quick second just to let the day go so far. Okay. And we're just going to take a nice deep belly breath in, filling the belly, filling the chest, thinking the words clear and free and exhaling, thinking the words release. Perfect. So we're going to do this again. So take a nice deep, deep belly breath in the deepest breath in you've taken all day thinking clear and free and exhale release perfect one more time so nice deep breath in hold it and feel the power that lies within your breath and exhale it all out let it go shake out those shoulders roll your neck and bring those shoulder blades down bring them down your back Bring those shoulders down away from your ears and just let your heart shine open. And notice your breath going back to its usual rhythm. And just continue to breathe into any area that feels a bit tense, sending patience there and just asking your body to fully relax. Good job. And I'm sure you heard Ranger in the background there because I also heard him. He's getting nice and comfortable too. And just like this, we are all ready to go, dogs included. (laughs) So surrendering, what does it really mean when we think of it from a growth mindset perspective and not a war (laughs) fighting perspective. And again, I'm not saying I'm a dictionary, so I'm not changing what, you know, the dictionary is saying surrender means. I'm just sharing what my truth is, and it may not be the absolute truth, but this is how I think of 
surrendering and how I use it in my day-to-day life. So lots of people out there, I'm sure, think that surrendering means to like give up completely, just quit, throw in the towel, just not even trying anymore, you know, just calling quits, done forever, done for good. And maybe it's like a sign of weakness, um, like a sign that you're losing, that you're just not good enough because you're just like, you know, just letting it all go and kind of like a a not great way. Like you're just throwing it away, you know? And I don't think that surrendering means any of that. I really don't. In fact, I think in order to surrender, you have to be strong. You really do have to be strong. You have to trust yourself and you have to know that you are divinely supported. You have to be in it for the long haul, you know? We're not in it for just the instant results because that's a lot of reasons why I think people are so quick to just like give up is because we live in the society of instant gratification. It's everywhere. It's on TV shows, it's shopping, it's literally everywhere. But the really big and beautiful things that we want in our life take time. They take time and they require us to be strong And to know that everything we desire is destined to be. And it's just a matter of time before it comes into our reality. As long as we are continuing to do the work and to make ourselves aligned to that which we desire, it's impossible to not be. But it takes time. (laughs) Earth is kind of like molasses when it comes to manifestation, okay? Like it takes some time. And... I wanted to share an analogy that had popped up into my head the other day about surrendering. And I thought this would be a really helpful way to look at it from a different perspective. You know, those kid games, like for baby toddlers that have the shapes and they have the blocks and you, you put the different shapes into the holes, into this board. Like it's got circles and squares and triangles and stars and just like really basic shapes. So you know this game, right? It, I think everyone has either seen it or played it or whatever. Very basic game to teach you shapes. So just imagine you're playing this game and you have this rectangle that you're holding and you're just trying and you're trying and you're trying to get it fit into this diamond shape that you're seeing on the board. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, these both have four sides. These both have 90 degree angles. Like, why won't this just go in? And you're like trying to shove it in, shove it in, shove it in. Like, this is meant to be. We're exactly the same. It's supposed to go in. Like, it's supposed to be here. So maybe you get frustrated and maybe you quit playing this game, which is like actually giving up in real life, you know, which we know plenty of people do. Giving up on dreams, giving up on plans, giving up on projects because it's just not fitting or working and the frustration just like takes all of the joy out of it and you no longer even try anymore. But instead, maybe let's say you say, you know what, I'm going to put this rectangle piece down for a second and I'm just going to pick up another piece like this round one. It looks a lot simpler and a lot more fun to play with. And you're like, you know what, here's this round one. And it could definitely fit in this other round hole I'm seeing. There's only one round hole on the whole board and it makes it a lot easier. So this game's getting a little bit funner because, or more fun, sorry, (laughs) because the circle is now fitting into the circle and you've just put it through and you're like, you know what, this is fun. Let's go back to this other shape we had, this other rectangle we have. And now you're looking at the board and now that you took the time to play a different a different shape, you saw that there's other holes on the board now. And you realize that there's another four-sided hole with 90 degree angles, but it also has one side longer than the other. And guess what? Now your rectangle goes in and it fits. So surrendering in this case, in this very simple childhood game, it wasn't giving up after the first shape didn't fit. That's not what surrendering is. It's deciding that, you know what? Maybe this shape isn't what I'm supposed to be playing with right now, okay? (laughs) Maybe I should play with a different shape. Maybe I should pick up the circle. Maybe I'll have a little bit more fun and feel a little bit more inspired with a circle. So maybe taking a break from this first shape, but I'm still playing the game, you know? I'm still in it, I'm still learning, I'm still having fun. 
it's going to serve me better overall to just play with some other pieces for a second to get more familiar with the board, get more familiar with the game. And in the end, it did help you, obviously, because not only did you get a circle in the hole, you also got that pesky little rectangle in the hole as well. You were able to see that there was actually a different hole altogether, and it worked perfectly. And this is what I mean by surrendering isn't giving up. It's not throwing in the towel. It's not saying fuck it. It's not quitting the game altogether. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It just means you're not forcing something to happen. You're not forcing something to fit if it doesn't fit. You know, it means you're giving yourself a break from trying to make shit happen that isn't supposed to happen by design, you know? How many people do you know have stayed in shitty jobs, shitty relationships, shitty situations just because they refuse to stop trying to make it work when it clearly wasn't serving them anymore? How many times have you done something similar and ended up getting hurt in the end anyways? How many times have you tried to force something to be and it just wasn't meant to be? And didn't it hurt more in the end? When you put more energy into it, trying to force and fight for something that just wasn't meant to be, and then it fell apart, and then you had to accept and surrender that it wasn't working, but it was more painful that way, right? That's the thing. Surrendering isn't walking away. It isn't quitting relationships or jobs or friendships forever. It's, it's acceptance. It is accepting what is And knowing that you can only control certain things and things that are out of your control, things that you cannot do anything about, they just are what they are. And you can either let it continue to drag you down, continue to dictate how your mood is, dictate how your day goes, or you can pivot your attention to something else. Surrender doesn't mean you own nothing. It doesn't mean you've given up everything in your life. It means that nothing owns you. Isn't that so beautiful? Surrender doesn't mean you own nothing. It means nothing owns you. There's this separation from allowing outside forces to influence your inner world. It's knowing that at the end of the day, you are what makes you happy. You are what provides your happiness. You are what provides your safety. You are what makes you whole. It's knowing that you don't have to do everything. You don't have to make everything happen. And you don't even have to force anything to be if it just doesn't feel good anymore. You can start flowing in a different direction of something that inspires you, that fills your cup, that makes you feel really good. You don't have to make anything happen. You don't have to force anything to be if it doesn't feel good. And don't get me wrong, there is going to be resistance in your life. So I'm not saying like in that aspect, whenever you get uncomfortable to just shift gears, not necessarily. I'm saying like different, like I'm saying situations you find yourself in that you can't stop thinking about like how you're going to get out of it, you know, how you can change it. You can't stop thinking about how you would be if you weren't in it or that you're just so deeply unhappy. in. you know, there's a difference between having like discomfort, but there's that like spark of excitement underneath. And like, that's when you should, you know, push through because that's, growth because there's excitement on the other side and it's just more of like a limiting belief that's kind of holding you back i'm talking when there's like there's no spark of excitement underneath it anymore it's like dread it's sadness it's anger these are the ones that you want to surrender to these are the ones that you want to accept for what they are knowing that you cannot do or change anything about it and honestly it takes so much strength to let things go in your life that no longer serve you. It takes an incredible amount of faith in yourself in knowing that you are going to be better off, not just okay, but better off in the long run for it. And it takes courage to do what you need to do for yourself. That's why I think surrender isn't 
a form of weakness at all. It is a form of strength. It, it is a form of power because you have to really truly trust and believe in yourself in order to do it, you know? And it's time to surrender to what is, guys. It is time to stop forcing things. It is time to let things be as they are. If you've done what you could in situations to try to change it, to try to make it work, to try to make, you know, I don't want, I don't even want to say, but maybe you have like tried to make yourself fit in a hole that was not designed for you. It's time to let it go. It's time to set your mind free. Just surrender to what is. It is what it is. And if it doesn't align with you, it just doesn't align with you. And that's totally fine. You know, if you like rock music, you like rock music. If you don't like opera music, you don't like opera music. You know, it's, it just is what it is. And just because you don't like opera music doesn't mean that it has to be destroyed or gone for forever. It just, it's not for you. So you can let it go and be for who needs it, who's going to learn from it, who's going to grow from it, who actually wants it in their life. And you know, it's about acceptance. Again, it's just accepting it, it what it is for what it is. You don't try to change something or try to change someone when it's not your job. In fact, you can't. You can't change someone. You've got to accept where they're at is where they're at and you can hold space for them and you can be an example for them. But at the end of the day, they're the ones who are going to have to do the work, who are going to be the ones that have to tell themselves, you know what, I'm ready for change. I'm ready to do something different. And it just is what it is. Everyone is on their path, on their journey, doing what they're doing, experiencing what they're experiencing. And the most beautiful and powerful thing you can do for someone is just honor the space in which they're at and allowing them to experience their reality in the way that they experience it and not trying to influence it based on the fact that you think something should be going different. And there's also this aspect of surrendering too that comes or like aligns with manifestation, I think. So as a manifesting generator in my human design, I have the ability to obviously manifest, <laughs> to create like that spark, that initial, the idea. But what I forgot to realize until recently, which I've been digging into my human design a lot deeper and I have been having aha moments like crazy, but something that I forgot is that sometimes the spark that I am able to generate isn't for me to also run with, isn't for me to also be the one to build it. And I'm surrendering to that fact that I don't have to be the one to create everything, that I can be the one to receive a spark. I can be the one to receive an idea from someone else and I can run with that or that I can receive the idea for something, but give it to someone else and they can run with that. And it's been really freeing. <laughs> I'm going to be honest that not everything is on me from like inception to manifestation. In fact, I'm supposed to be allowing things to flow to me. That's like the generator part of me. I'm supposed to like respond to situations and I'm supposed to allow them to come in to me my air, my aura, my mind, my area. And I noticed that I literally have been blocking things from coming into my existence because I had this, this notion, this belief that I had to be the one to create everything from the idea to the manifestation that I could do it all. And I'm sure there's been plenty of opportunities and times that I have done it all, but I don't need to. That's what you know, being a manifesting generator is about you. It's that flexibility of both. And, you know, I'm really digging into this human design and I'm having so many aha moments with it, but this was something that I had to surrender to, to realize that I also sometimes need to sit and wait for things to come to me and for me to respond to them and to build off of that. And it's not always necessarily, I have to build, 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 and that I can, you know, surrender and allow things to flow to me. There's this like beautiful art 
of surrendering to the universe. And that's, that's what I'm talking about here. That's kind of what I'm doing now. And just knowing that there's greater forces at play and that these amazing and beautiful opportunities that I'm seeking and these experiences I desire to have, they can actually flow into my life easier if I just stopped trying to control everything. If I just stopped trying to make everything happen. And if I just surrendered to the fact that I'm not meant to do everything on my own, if I just surrendered to the fact that sometimes I'm supposed to wait, like <laughs> that one has been so hard for me. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but I am working on it and I'm surrendering to it. And sometimes I'm supposed to let things come to me instead of creating every opportunity or thing from scratch. And this is like a form of surrender. I'm allowing what is to be. I'm recognizing that there is a part of me that actually benefits from waiting. There's a part of me that actually benefits from allowing others to come in with ideas. There's a part of me that benefits from responding to situations as opposed to trying to create everything from scratch. And another thing I want to note too is that being like really tired or being exhausted can also be like a red flag for you that you're going against the flow of energy and that you're using your own energy instead of tapping into like source flow state and it's a great sign for you to recognize if there's something that you need to just let be as it is something you can surrender to that you can stop fighting for fighting against pushing for forcing because there's a lot of energy that goes into creating things. There's a lot of energy that goes into generating things, bringing things to reality. There's a lot of energy that goes into forcing things. There's a lot of energy that goes into that. And if you're feeling that you're feeling really tired all of the time, take a second to just look at your life and be like, okay, where am I like putting a lot of energy? And maybe I shouldn't be. That is kind of eating it up and not doing anything beneficial for me? Where can I just let things be as they are without feeling the need to change it, without feeling the need to input something into it? So just for like a little example for you, Jordan and I, we actually wanted to move to North Carolina last year and we were putting offers onto homes and we were just getting outbidded like crazy. I'm sure I'm sure you've heard of the house market last year and it was wild. I'm not going to lie. It was wild. Every house we put like an offer in, we just got outbidded by like full cash offers. And I'm sitting here like, who the hell has full cash offers like this? And it's businesses and things of that nature. Anyways, I started getting this feeling of just being like really tired about it all. And just also like not enjoying it anymore. And the fun was like zapped out of it. And it started to feel like something just really wasn't right at all. And I started to just not feel good about it. So I went and I got a reading done by someone that I really trust just to see if what I was feeling was worth paying attention to, because I am still working on that (laughs) of trusting my gut, trusting my intuition. I'm getting better at it. But at that point, a year ago, I you know, it was a big thing for me to just all of a sudden feel really differently about. So I was like, where is this coming from? I want to make sure that, you know, it's not just fear, but something more like my intuition telling me something. Long story short, it was. (laughs) And since we stayed, I was able to start my business. And look where that led me to right here, (laughs) right here, right now with this podcast. I can't say that this podcast would exist if I had kept forcing my way through. If we had just kept pushing through, pushing in offers and just taking whatever we could. And we were, we were really, uh, I'm losing the word of whatever I'm trying to say, but we were really like, we had a set of things that we wanted and we started like cutting down that list and we were sacrificing. That's what I was looking for. So we were sacrificing on things we really wanted just so that we could like get a home and that's not, (laughs) that's not great. And that's part of the reason why it didn't work. Um, But I'm really glad that it didn't work because now we have a lot of beautiful things that have come into our lives because we've stayed. We've gotten really great jobs that are supporting us really well. We've gotten a new camper that we're going to be traveling in. We've gotten, he's gotten into 
motorcycles. He's got his Harley Davidson. I've got my business now. Like a lot of things grew out of the fact that we did not push through and continue fighting for that when it just doesn't feel right anymore. So instead, you know, Jordan and I, we surrendered to what was not working. Buying a house in North Carolina was not working. And we focused our attention elsewhere. We focused on how we can enjoy our time here right now, where we are right now with the things that we had gotten, like the motorcycle and then me starting the business and then our trailer. Like, what can we do now to enjoy where we're at? And what direction do we actually want to take going forward? And we now realize we actually want to go somewhere else entirely. Like, we want to go to Florida. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> In a year, how life like just unfolds like that for you and you get new opportunities and new things to experience and new clarity when you take a moment to be like, you know what, this doesn't feel like it's flowing and it's working and I'm not excited about it anymore. So I'm just going to let that be what it is. And I'm just going to continue on, continue what I'm doing. I'm not giving up completely. I didn't say I'm never going to move again. You know, we just recognize that the move was not happening right then and there. And that maybe there was somewhere else that was more fitting for us. And yeah, we're realizing that's the case now. And one last analogy that I want to leave you with is this example of making a grilled cheese. So think of surrendering like making a grilled cheese. So I don't make grilled cheeses in the house. <laughs> that is Jordan's job because I am impatient for waiting the, for the cheese to melt and always burn the bread. Always. And where I'm going at with this is that you have to cook grilled cheese on low and slow with lots of butter. It's just what you have to do. And the thing too is you've kind of got to leave it on one side first. You can't keep like taking the lid off if you're melting your cheese that way, which I think most people do. You can't keep taking the lid off and like flipping it and flipping it and flipping it and not actually letting the heat get in and melt the cheese. And also you don't want to do what I have a tendency of doing of just cranking the heat a little too high to like force it or rush it to cook quicker, to melt the cheese quicker, because then it's just going to burn. We all know to cook a really good grilled cheese, you have to do it low and slow. And surrendering is like waiting for that goddamn cheese to melt in your grilled cheese. And knowing that the cheese is melting ever so slowly on your low heat and it's just letting it do its thing without trying to force it to be faster, without cranking more heat into it and destroying your grilled cheese by burning it. And I hope that this was helpful. I hope you liked my two analogies as well, the toy and the grilled cheese. <laughs> I hope this got some gears turning in your head. And I hope that this made the idea of surrendering something that you actually want to embrace to see how life unfolds for you, to see how the magic can unfold in your life right before your own very eyes when you just start to let things be as they are. Because again, you can have it all. You are worthy of all of your desires and sometimes, though, we have to remember that we're not supposed to do it all. Let the universe build the life of your dreams with you. You make the plan. You're the architect. Let the universe give you the building blocks. Let the universe give you the crew to build it. And in case no one has told you this today, I am so proud of you. You are doing amazing, sweetie. And I love you. I love you. I love you. And I will catch you in the next one.